Hello again everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you guys a quick review of the Mate desktop environment. Version 1.24 was just released very recently and it's one of my favorite desktop environments so I wanted to check it out. So I have it loaded on this laptop right here so let's go ahead and dive right in. So right now I am actually running Manjaro on this laptop. I actually installed the GNOME edition of Manjaro for a previous review and I thought I would keep it around for a while because I really do enjoy Manjaro. They're doing a very good job and their GNOME release is really good as well. But what I wanted to do was get a look at what the Mate desktop environment is going to look like and I didn't want any Manjaro specific changes. I wanted to basically have a vanilla untouched Mate install. And that's exactly what I have here. So the way that I accomplished that is I just opened up a terminal and I installed the Mate and Mate Extras packages. I didn't use the package manager for Manjaro or any of their tools because again, I wanted a clean untouched version of Mate. I want to see what the developers of Mate 1.24 have added to this release. And I thought the best way to do that was to make sure that I didn't have any distribution specific changes. And as you can see right here, that's exactly what I have. You don't see the Manjaro theme or anything like that. This is what Mate 1.24 looks like when you install it straight from the packages from your distributions repositories. Now one of the reasons why I was so eager to check this out, I mean, besides the fact that it's one of my favorite desktop environments, is I wanted to see how stable it was because what keeps me from using Mate on a day-to-day -day basis is that there just seems to be um, a bunch of small bugs, nothing major, nothing crashes or anything like that, but just really tiny things that just get under my skin that makes me go back to GNOME. And I wanted to see if any of those bugs have been fixed or what the general consensus is about stability. And the thing is, the Mate developers have been working extremely hard doing exactly that, fixing bugs and stabilizing the desktop. So I was really excited about this release because I wanted to see just how far they've gone in basically removing bugs. So, so far, my time with Mate 1.24 has actually been minimal because I've only had a little bit of time. But so far, I haven't been able to reproduce any of the problems that I've had in the past. And to be fair, the previous version of Mate had fixed at least half, if not 75% of the problems that I had. So I think that it, it's very well possible that this might be the first time that I can actually use Mate as my daily driver. I hope so, because I love this desktop. So definitely want to give a shout out and kudos to all of the Mate developers who are working so hard in stabilizing this and making it such a pleasant old school experience for everyone. And that's exactly what this is. This is an old school desktop. I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm a GNOME user primarily, but there, there's just something refreshing about using Mate because it's like taking a you know time warp back into the past and just seeing how things used to be with GNOME 2, which is something that I used to use quite a bit back in the day. And this isn't just GNOME 2. Mate just feels faster and more responsive. And it's not just because it's an old school desktop running on new hardware. There's actual changes with how the desktop is compiled that differentiates it from GNOME 2 and actually makes it snappier and more responsive. And again, as you can see here, we have a vanilla Mate installation because again, I wanted to see Mate as the developers intended it to be so that way my review could be more about Mate and less about distribution specific changes. And one thing that I really wish they would change is the theme because honestly, I think that's the weak point of Mate. The theme is okay, but it just kinda, I don't know, it just doesn't really look that great. And thankfully, there's a bunch of themes that you can install. There's matelook.org, which is a website you can go to to install themes. So by no means are you stuck with it looking like this, but I actually think that the theme looks old school to a fault. And the default wallpaper, I mean, it's just color gradients here. Now, if you go to change the desktop background, for example, 
you'll see that there's actually quite an awesome selection here of really good looking wallpapers. Now some of these obviously are going to be from Manjaro. So, you know, you can kind of see that right here. And this is just because when I install the GNOME edition of Manjaro, of course it installs its own backgrounds. So it's gonna be hard to really differentiate the backgrounds from uh, Manjaro or the ones that are shipped with Mate, but I'm pretty sure that this one is the one that's shipped with Mate and the one that I love. It's actually a slideshow of space wallpaper and you know, I just now realized I'm wearing a NASA t-shirt today. It's a coincidence, I swear. I'm a space geek, I love this stuff, so that's why I use this wallpaper. And um, you know, every now and then the wallpaper will change to a different image. And I find myself using this. So even though the default is kind of boring, Mate does actually include my favorite set of wallpapers um, right from the default installation. And the package name is typically Mate-Backgrounds. And distributions that ship Mate as a desktop environment will usually ship that by default. But here it is. So let's go ahead and just take a look at the other themes. I'm just curious if there's anything else here by default. So even though I went to uh, right click and change background, that's just an easy way to get to change the theme here. And some of these themes are going to be obviously from Manjaro because this wasn't a uh, fresh install of Manjaro because you know Manjaro Mate is going to include their own tweaks. And I didn't want that. But we do have we do have some options here, like this blue Menta is actually one of theirs. And I'm pretty sure this one might be as well. So we do have a selection of themes here, but nothing that's really going to look modern or, you know, just uh, professional. So maybe that's something that they can tackle in a future release. So for now, I'm going to apply the default. And here it is. And actually, I just noticed that Black Mate is here. Let's see. And this one actually does look pretty sweet, to be honest. I think this one is pretty cool. But again, I'm going to go back to the default here. Now, one of the new features straight away, and I think you may have just seen it if you were paying very close attention when I switched desktops or workspaces, is uh, this looks different here. I, I can't really put my finger on it, but this looks a lot more professional when I switch the workspaces. And I'm talking about this little overlay that appears on the screen right here. So I think that's pretty cool. And of course, we can add additional workspaces here. I'll go to Preferences, I have four. So I could basically just fill my entire bottom panel with a bunch of desktops if I wanted to. And I kind of miss the dynamic workspaces of GNOME. I really like that a lot. I hope that's something that the Mate developers can introduce in a future release. But um, it's pretty cool to be able to set your workspaces. And one of the things I might do, for example, is I might name one email. I'll name one browsing. And you get the idea. You could basically name your workspaces and have as many as you'd like. And then you can check this box here, show workspace names in the switcher. None of this is new. This is just uh, an aside, something that I like to configure when I set up Mate. But anyway, let's go ahead and clean the desktop here. And let's open up the Mate system monitor right here. And with no applications running aside from, you know, I have a KeePass database right there or the KeePass app, it's not really using that many resources at all, about a gigabyte or so, give or take. And there's about 24 gigs of RAM on this model and we can see the CPU usage is very low. So Mate is pretty cool because it does keep a lot of your system resources available for your applications and it basically stays out of the way. Now back to new features. I'm going to open up a file manager here. I just want to have a couple of windows open to show you guys the next thing. So if I do Alt Tab, this has actually been improved and this is one of the newer features of Mate 1.24. And I think that it does look pretty modern. Um, it's probably not the best Alt Tab experience I've ever seen from any desktop environment but it is very decent, I like it. So they're basically improving small little details like that all over the desktop. And that's what you could basically expect in every new Mate release is smaller but still important changes that will give you a better experience overall. We'll get back to the video shortly, but I wanna take a moment to thank my sponsor, Linode. In fact, there's never been a better time to try Linode because from now until May 31st, 2020, 
Linode is giving every single account access to object storage for free. That's right, whether you've created an account way back in 2003 or just today, you can take advantage of free object storage at Linode until May 31st. And what precisely is object storage, you might ask? Object storage is an easy way for you to store and access data without the need for a running server. And it's perfect for data that doesn't regularly change, like images and other multimedia files, important backups, or giant archives for servers that might need more storage space. One of the best use cases for object storage is hosting your own static website. You can have a site up and highly available on Linode's object storage service with as little as an HTML and CSS file. To give object storage a try for free and get an additional $20 credit on your new Linode account, sign up at www.linode.com slash learn Linux TV. I really appreciate Linode as a sponsor. Not only are they a sponsor, they've been my cloud infrastructure provider for quite some time now, and their service is awesome. Definitely check them out. Now let's get back to the video. So another new change here, I'll bring up the control center to show you guys. If I search for date, it's the time and date manager, which apparently is brand new in this release. Now, this is something that I don't really feel like I'll ever use because I just install NTP. I have a template in Ansible that sets that up for me. And most distributions kind of just default to that. But if you, for some reason, need to edit your time zone, maybe enable NTP, which is already enabled. I don't know why that's showing that it's disabled. This is an application that basically gives you direct access to do that and is found right here in the control center. So I guess it's a good thing to be able to allow the user to more easily manage their date and time. I would argue that users really shouldn't have to touch the date and time because that should be done for you automatically. But, you know, again, here it is, and it's just one more thing that it empowers the user to be able to do. So it's definitely not a bad thing. So there's a, a few smaller improvements I do want to talk about real quick. So... One thing is that the system tray right here has actually had some uh, work done to better support oddly sized icons. And it's one of those things that's going to be hard to show you, but if you've ever had an application in the system tray and the icon was actually too big for the system tray, um, things like that are going to be better handled in this release, which I think is great. I think it's great that it even has a system tray because, you know, that's something that's missing from GNOME. I understand why they removed it, but at the same time, you know, applications that use the system tray are going to still use it, and that's just the way it is, and it's good to have support for that, which Mate does, and they've made it even better in this release as well. Now, another thing that is supported here is going to be, and I'll, I'll just reopen this, the Mate system monitor. So here on the file systems tab, it basically just shows you how much space you have free. And my internal drive is an NVMe drive. And I didn't even think to look at this because you know, it was just one of those things you don't think about unless you find that it's missing. And apparently in the system monitor, support for NVMe drives was actually added with this release. And you know, I didn't even notice that this was missing, but you know, they've gone ahead and made sure that System Monitor supports NVMe drives, which is pretty cool. And speaking of smaller changes, if I right click on Applications and click Edit Menus, and here's the menu editor, which allows you to, well, edit your menus. If you ever wanted to customize your Applications menu, basically this right here, or even your System menu right here, you'll find that you can easily do so with this menu editor. And they've actually added the undo and redo buttons down here at the bottom, which actually were not there before. And I kind of think that's definitely important if you, um, you know, accidentally delete something. You know, if I just go ahead and delete my entire office menu, for example, oops, um, that'd be pretty bad if there's no undo button, but now there is. So I'm able to basically get that re-added. And it's kind of interesting when I delete it and then I undo, it's disabled by default, but you know, that's fine. Basically, it allows you to undo any changes you make to the, your menu, which I think is actually really important when you're doing something as important as, well, editing a menu. So yet another smaller change that's definitely welcome in this new version. If I go here to Applications and then System Tools, you'll see that we have the uh, Mate Disk Image Mounter right here. 
And immediately when I opened it, it's asking me to open something. And you can see right here, it's looking for a .img or a .iso file. Basically the two most common formats that are used when distributing Linux images, whether it be for the Raspberry Pi or an ISO image for a more general installation. And off camera, I downloaded the Raspbian Buster Lite image right here, uh, just because it'd be you know, quick to download. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount it. And you can see that it actually mounted the image right here on the left, and I love this a lot. Now, obviously mounting the Raspbian install image isn't really all that beneficial, but in practice, I think this makes a lot of sense because a lot of times I am backing up Raspberry Pi SD card images, for example, and what I can do if I need a very specific file or if I need to make a change to a specific file, I could basically mount the image right to my file system and then access it. So for example, if I go to the Etsy directory, and then the WPA supplicant directory, and right here we have the WPA supplicant config, and I could simply edit that file, or better yet, I could go here to the boot directory, which is actually the appropriate place to put it. I could drop the config file right here, unmount the image, then write the image to an SD card, and then when I power up a Raspberry Pi, it'll already have that configuration uh, present. So I think that's going to be very useful for me because, I mean, it might not seem like a big deal, but if you've ever gone through the task of mounting an image to the file system, it's not that it's hard, it's just a little bit annoying. There's few, you know, there's more steps to it than I would like. So to have a tool that's dedicated to that task, that's actually pretty cool. I think I'm going to use the heck out of this because I am constantly editing SD card images between all of my Raspberry Pis, and you know that includes my Kubernetes stack, which is also running on Raspberry Pi, and then I have a bunch of uh, retro Pi units as well. I think I'm going to use this quite often, and it's going to definitely help me out. It's not that mounting an SD card image is difficult. There's just more steps to that than I would like, and this is going to simplify the process greatly. So overall, I've really been enjoying Mate 1.24 quite a bit so far. Now, obviously I need more time to spend with it before I have a final opinion, but so far it's definitely a lot more stable than in the past. The time that I have spent with it, I haven't had any bugs or issues or anything annoying come up at all, and that's definitely a step in the right direction. So I'm very happy to see the results of all of the hard work that the developers are putting into this release. So there you go. That was my look at Mate 1.24. It's definitely been a fun time checking this out. I love to see what they're coming up with in every release. I'm going to keep using it for a while. If anything noteworthy happens, I'll let you guys know in a future review. And I'll definitely be taking a look at Ubuntu Mate 2004 that's going to come out in about a month or less. And I'm looking forward to that as well because that's going to feature the newest Mate release. And I'll give you my thoughts about Mate 1.24 if I have anything additional to mention at that time in addition to all the other good, awesome things that we have to look forward to in that distribution. So there you go. Let me know in the comments below what your opinions are of Mate. I can't wait to check out what you guys have to say about that. And I will see you in a new video pretty soon. I have a ton of awesome things coming down the pipeline. And go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And I will see you in the next video.